wings, who's going to be in the back row. You can't just rinse and repeat and pull out a all-conference you know, style player such as Allison Jacobs out of Stevenson Ranch, California. But with that being said, there's still an opportunity for the younger people, the underclassmen, some rotational players to really get in there, really make a statement, and try to come away with a home victory against Ohio State. Another thing to mention, tale of two teams and what they've done recently, Avery, University of Michigan on a three-match losing streak, Ohio State looking for win number three in a row. That's a lot of momentum shifting one way or another. Oh, it definitely is. The Wolverines really would love to come out on top with this win, especially with an, a string of, of away games after this night before we meet with Oregon at the end of the month. Ohio State looking to put that third win would mean a lot, especially on this big rivalry game in Ann Arbor. It would mean a lot to both teams to have this win. So ultimately, as the game plays out, we'll see just who has that extra bit of ohms. Let's now go to the starting lineup for the Buckeyes of Ohio State. All righty. Well, we have number 20, Riley Raider is going to get the start for the libero position. Olivia Hasbrook. Also, number nine, Mia Tuman. Joining her on the court is going to be number 17, Reese Webker, as well as number 22, Emily Londot, and that's going to be your starters for Ohio State. The Buckeyes going right to left, wearing, of course, their scarlet and gray long sleeve whites. And as the home Wolverines take the court, the full length of the maize and blue. I kind of like the pattern where it starts at the, you know, maize right at the wrist yep. and kind of fades away. Yeah, a little gradient in there. It's definitely a nice touch. Libero coming out now, of course. Maddie Cochran, the defensive specialist. Libero, the 5'5 senior out of Downers Grove, Illinois. So some Illinois products getting some reps for the University of Michigan as well as the pride of the Mighty Max out of Orland Park, Ellie White. And then out of Champaign Central, Illinois, Mira Chopra. About to get underway here once again. For Avery Walsh, I'm Peter Ferrari. Welcome to Big Ten Volleyball. Out of play, service error on the first one for the setter, Morgan Burke out of Scott Catholic in Omaha. This is definitely, Michigan serving is definitely going to be a big point um, differential tonight. We're hoping that those service errors remain pretty low as that has been a, a mistake that Wolverines have really had to conquer this season. Quick pass over the middle. Oh. That's how she wants it. Serena Niambio, the middle blocker out of Troy, Michigan, able to deliver the first one. That's where she wants that set. Just give her the quick one, let her deliver. Back to serve now. Hop serve by Demetrician. Looking underneath it, playable from the back row. From the 10 foot line, Ohio State now looking for the attack. Far oh. side, Selman still alive. Long rally here way in Ann Arbor. Off, way to play off the block, Ohio. Oh, and Ohio State gets the point off by blocking outside hitter Valentina, or yeah. right side hitter. No, that was, that was a nice play. If you look at how the defense of Ohio State just kind of converged on that near side pin, able to deliver. Serving now is Emmy Selman out of Bunsen, Burtonville, Maryland. Quick punch, looking to send it to the campfire to no avail. Far pin, not playable at the 10 foot line. Once again, Valentina Vallette out of Cordoba, Argentina. Not able to get there in time. And a quick start for Ohio State. Three to one. Selman to serve again out of Burtonsville, Maryland. The back set, back row, that stays in. And you see head coach Jen Flynn Oldenburg looking back at her bench seeing, hey, should we challenge that or not? They are not going to, so they'll proceed on. 3-2, that was close. It was. I know that was a pretty close from up here in the bird's eye view. Cochran now sends it to the near side, playable for the Buckeyes. High back jump set. The left hand punch is going to go up to the perch. Morgan Burke not able to deliver. Quick pace play for Ohio State so far, if I would say, Avery. I would say so as well. Number 20, Riley Raider is back to serve for the Buckeyes. Raider out of Louisville, Kentucky, the pride of Assumption High School. 
There's that back set going through the double. Nice job angling Vowlette. She's been going pin side more often. That time rotates the wrist a little, goes toward the inside blocker. Point for the Wolverines. Now getting the serve is the aforementioned Vowlette. Vowlette is always one to watch on the court, whether it be her swing or when she's attacking or on that serve. She just is a powerhouse and leaves opponents shaking in their boots a little bit. And Michigan ties it up on the kill air for the Buckeyes. A lot of continuity and camaraderie be between all these coaches. We'll get to that little coaching tree and family atmosphere in a moment. Tied at four. That one will go way out of play. A sellout crowd here at Keene Arena on a Friday evening. It is a busy night on campus, Avery. Many other sports happening at the exact same time, so it's still amazing to see sellout here in Ann Arbor. It is. We had an earlier meet for swim and dive. Hockey, basketball, and volleyball are all going on tonight, so to have a large crowd for such an important game is really part of what makes this atmosphere so challenging for Ohio State to walk into. Kendall Ray did a little bit of the matrix on that far line. The grad student out of Dallas, Texas. Tied once again at five. Pep band in full fervor this evening. High three set, tools it through. Reese Webker out of Centerville, Ohio, able to deliver. And it's just both teams right now, Avery, blow after blow after blow. Yep. It's gonna, I have a feeling it's gonna stay that way. Both Michigan and Ohio State are super heavy on the hitters, both very responsive and very hard hitting. So it shall be an interesting night. Reese Webker with the service error. You know, let me ask you this question as a former player in your own right. You see Allison Jacobs not playing in today. If you are the Buckeyes, do you say, hey, we lost against them a few weeks ago. We can maybe try to exploit that one of their best players isn't in the lineup. I definitely think that'll be a highlight of the, uh, a highlight of the Buckeyes um, offense tonight. Allison Jacobs is a key player on the team. Her, her spirit, her skill, her talent, and her camaraderie with her teammates um, is definitely missed on the court tonight. And I think that the Buckeyes, um, I'm sure that the coach has noticed this, Coach Oldenburg, and is going to make note of it when it comes to her game day strategy. One point lead for the Buckeyes. Again, recent victories against Michigan State on the road, Iowa at home, and a five setter against Minnesota. But the Wolverines say, talk about us and acknowledge me. Huge kill, 7-7. Seven, seven. Morgan Burke going back for the serve on the Wolverines. Solid pass to the middle, nice dig by Cochran. Falling away, the rollover, joust at the net, and a net violation is gonna be called against the freshman out of Appleton North High School, Ella Demetrician. It's gotta be so hard, Avery, when it's that joust opportunity at the net to not make contact. Yeah, you're so eager, you're right there, and yet that net is also right there. So when you're up and you're blocking or you're attacking like, like those girls were, you just always gotta be careful. Swinging hard on that far line, not able to keep it in. Two point lead for the Buckeyes, biggest lead of the evening for either team. Let's restart asking yourself if your coach Erin Virtue in her second season at the helm, also a multi-time medal winning coach in the Olympic Games. When do we decide to start pulling out a timeout if necessary? How long is that leash going to be per se? 10-7 your score. Hop serve, playable, trying to pull it down a Bump just to keep things alive. Over the middle, left hand uppercut. And a nice little run for Ohio State. A 4-0 run for the Buckeyes. Number nine, Mia Tuman back to serve once again for the Buckeyes. 
Far side, playable. Ohio State all over these last few points of the opening set of action. Roll over playable, Londot. Another point for Ohio State. Absolutely feeling it right now. And there indeed, Coach Virtue is going to utilize that timeout. We kind of felt it coming when it got to four points. Now at five, you got to stop things in their tracks. Let's go to this really quickly. Again, for Avery Walsh on Peter Freire on Big Ten Plus. Avery, what have you seen Ohio State do to start pulling away here in set number one? Well, like we just saw at that last point, Ohio State is doing a great job of covering and being responsive to where the ball is being tipped or the, sh the shoulders are being pointed. And so I think that they're just having a bit of a quicker responsive and reactive time than Michigan is so far. But it's early in the night. It's early in the match. There's still hope for that Wolverines to pull ahead um, and get that win tonight. Looking at how these teams have gotten to this point. You know, we were going to talk about, as mentioned, that little bit of the coaching tree, which is so fun. Coach Flynn coached Coach Virtue back in the day. And then Coach Virtue coached Coach Barch in the Tokyo Olympics. And then Coach Flynn played collegiate ball with Coach Aaron Virtue's sister. And then, of course, Ohio State coach Corey Crocker was recruited and played for Michigan under Coach Virtue. I hope you got all of that. <laughs> it's definitely a small world, but it's even a smaller conference. A lot of these girls have grown up playing against each other. So although this rivalry is fierce, it is tough. Both teams really want to win. There is that sense of familiarity in that coaching tree that makes things just a little bit easier, more respectable. So first time out going to be called. We appreciate you sticking with us with the history lesson here on Big Ten Plus. 12-7 <laughs> your score. Buckeyes on the road fell earlier in the season at home against Michigan 3-1. to one. Sellout crowd in Keene. Uppercut with the left hand, and that's the coach's point you like to see. A little bit flat-footed. Tuman didn't quite know where she wanted to go with that one or that she might have been getting help right over that 10-foot line. Help didn't come. Nice point for the Wolverines to try to claw back into this. Blocked over the middle. Outstanding play once again by the middle blocker, Niambio as she is having a stellar, stellar junior season in her own right. Mambio coming in. 163 kills, tied for third on the team. On the block side, Mambio with 83 total blocks. It's a lot of blocks. Near pin, playable at the 10-foot line. Roll over yet again by Vallette. Double block out of play. Ohio State finding that angle. They saw the Michigan Wolverine block start creeping toward the middle of the net, not playing the pin as much, took advantage. Just great court awareness right now by Ohio State. Definitely. They're doing a great job of just that awareness and then those quick adjustments to whenever they see an opening or they see a little air on their side of the court. Buckeyes get another point. So Michigan went on a little run of their own. Ohio State answering back with two in their own right. Ohio State nine kills to four for Michigan. So a five kill differential. Set to the far pin, off the double tip. Nice play by Kendall Ray. The pride of Dallas, Texas delivers. The stars at night shine big and bright deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't know if I can help you out there, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting, you lived in Texas for a while. I so did, I, maybe, I did. Maybe I that's just normal vernacular, like you move there and they teach you that, <sighs> yeah, you know, right no, off the bat. I might have missed that lesson. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie Cochran back with the serve. Um, number 19, Senior Libero. Tries to teardrop it at the net, poked over. Playable for the Wolverines. Far side breaking through to the other side. 
What outstanding play. Kendall Ray just getting set up time and time again by Morgan Burke. Burke just finding the outside and taking advantage. There's one thing the Wolverines know how to do. It's play point by point by point and just rack up those points against any shortages they may have or um, lacking behind the other team's points. Burke set to the far side. Buckeyes try to reply. Nice dig in the back row. Free ball back bump to keep the rally going. The back set, isolation, that stays in. Cochran is saying that she felt it went out. Coast Virtue on the spot. And that's what happens when you have Chris passing after a free ball. You had a one-on-one -on -one scenario on the far side. Absolutely. Easier said than done to stop that. <laughs> Running for it, not able to get there cleanly is going to be Jackie Boney out of Brookhaven, Georgia. Boney one block away from moving up in the all-time leaderboard. On the back set, tipped over. Welcome to the campfire, Valentina Vallette. Wolverines back to within two. Every time, however, Michigan has creeped close, Ohio State's gotten on a little run of their own. Michigan needs some two-for-one deals. It's not quite Black Friday <laughs> yet, but they'll take some specials on this Friday. Wow, what a powerhouse serve from Valentina. Looking for the rollover to no avail is going to be Olivia Hasbrook out of Eureka, Missouri. The 5'8 freshman, what a pressure situation if you ask me. A freshman coming in and saying, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna be our starting libero. Yeah, no both, big deal. Both the Michigan and the Ohio State team is a relatively young team. Um, so this rivalry will be exciting to watch as the years go on because most of these players will come back if they're, and most of the stars in the Ohio State team with the exception of the two grad students are all underclassmen. So it'll be a really exciting rivalry to come as we get to recognize these faces and watch the rivalry grow. Yeah, that's something the staff of Ohio State said as well. Look, we know we are a very young team, but having Coach Jen Flynn Oldenburg, we know that we have one of the most respected coaches in the Big Ten set over the middle. So that's huge, not only for recruiting the transfers, but for recruiting the freshmen as well. Absolutely. Yeah, Olivia Hansbrook and Emmy Selman are two of the most decorated um, recruits out of their freshman class. So it really is a key to not only recruit them, but also they are starting for this team. So yes, they may be young, but they're quite powerful. And there's the block. Jackie Boney moving up in the record books. Yet again, congratulations. She is now tied for 10th on the all-time block list with, here's the fun part, Ohio State <laughs> assistant coach, Corey Crocker, and she is one away from tying Beth Karpiak at 372. At 375 is Julia Strum, so might be a stretch to get there today, but one more would not be a surprise by any stretch of the imagination. It's got to be such a relief if you're a Michigan player knowing, yeah, we have one of the best blockers in history of this program playing with us right now. Absolutely. These teams have met many a times. Michigan trails the all-time series 59 to 29. However, with kills like that, you now know why Michigan on a two-match win streak. Earlier, of course, October the 13th to 24, then October the 29th, last year here at Keene Arena. Their first time they met, October the 11th, 1974. So that is how you get to that high number of wins, losses. A storied, storied rivalry between these two teams. Cleaning up the court a little bit. Michigan still haven't found the opportunity to tie it yet two thirds of the way through the first. Power serve, but playable. Hitting the net, falling away on the set was Tooman, and she just didn't get it high enough for her teammate, and just like that, we're tied at 18. 
Number six, Ellie White with serve once again for the Wolverines. Served by White as stated. That a service error, a rare service error here in set number one for either team. White, the 5'11 freshman out of Mother Macaulay High School. Shout out to my sister who went there. They weren't classmates, a little bit different in age, but <laughs> home of the Mighty Max. Out of play, hit the, hit the line judge right on the shoe. So I always say if it touches any part of the line judge, you know it's out. Right. Tied right. once again at 19. My high school volleyball coach, a.k.a. my mother, used to say, <laughs> if it's over your shoulders and you're in the back row, it's not yours. But I think that it also applies if it's touching the ref's shoe. I like that. I like that. Shout out to Coach Rachel. <laughs> Aggressive play at the net. Tip over. Picking up the pieces. High back set. Back row. That one went over the shoulders as well. And again, good play by Ohio State to just get out of the way. One point lead for the Buckeyes. They've reached the red zone, as some coaches like to call it, that 20 point mark here on the road. Again, last time these two teams met, a Michigan victory. Vallette and Burke each recorded double doubles. Vallette, 13 kills, 17 digs where Burke had 41 assists and 19 digs. But the Buckeyes now up by two. Coach Virtue hasn't used her second timeout yet. Let's see what happens potentially if the Buckeyes get one more point. Again, if you're Coach Virtue, you know your team better than anybody. Little bit of a leash, but again with the closing points of set one, not gonna need one there. Outstanding Valette. Just kind of court awareness on that one. Substitution happening momentarily. Definitely, Coach Versi definitely knows her team and knows when to call a timeout and when to let the girls mm -hmm. figure it out, pull it together all by themselves. The staff of Ohio State were kind of saying, oh, nice dump over the middle. That is just perfect court awareness. Riley Raider, like an autumn wind, Raider delivers. Almost going out of play. Mistimed on the kill attempt. Few Wolverines run into each other, but far post, not able to get to it. 23-20. And there indeed is going to be the second and final timeout by Coach Aaron Virtue in set number one. Avery, every time, we've said it a few times now, but every time Michigan got a little bit closer, Ohio State said, not so fast. What has Ohio State been able to do after every kind of mini run that Michigan's shown? I, I would say honestly, like I said earlier, it's just that responsiveness. When they see mm. that hole on Michigan's side, they are quick to, to fill it in. And when they see a hole on their own, they're quick to grab their girls and just react to that. And I think that um, that has really been the key to Ohio State's success tonight is just being able that fast reaction without the need for a timeout mm -hmm. or a, a coach to step in. But this is pretty nerve-wracking. We're 2023. Yeah, yeah. You know, and one thing I think bears mentioning when we were talking to the coaching staff for Ohio State they stated that one of the big turning points of their season came just recently, and that was against number 15th ranked Minnesota and the Golden Gophers. It was a five set loss, but they said if we would have had that killer mentality to kill when we get into the red zone, that could have been flipped the other way. They said that's something they really took into practice, created scenarios in practice to bring that type of pressure. And what have you seen since then? A 3-0 sweep of Iowa, a 3-1 victory at Michigan State where they took out Sparty. And we're seeing the potential of another strong start and a strong finish of the opening set against Michigan. Definitely, Ohio State is coming out to play. They are fighting for every single point and they are hitting hard. Number 14, Emma, Emmy Selman back for the serve once again for the Buckeyes, hoping to finish out this game. 
Again, welcome in Big Ten Plus for Avery Walsh. I'm Peter Ferrari. The Buckeyes need two points to take set one on the road in a sold out environment. That's the first one of two. Outstanding ace. Ace is the place for number 14, Selman. Looking at her season numbers so far, that is ace number nine on the year. The teardrop. Cochran picks up the pieces at the 10 foot line. Rollover, playable in the back row. Block out of play. And that is going to be how set one ends in Ann Arbor. 25 to 20. Can the Wolverines find their way back and tie it up at one set apiece? Or will the Buckeyes take a 2 0 lead? Don't go anywhere. We will be back momentarily on Big Ten Plus. Welcome back into the booth on Big Ten Plus for Avery Walsh. I'm Peter Ferrari. 25-20 is how set one ended. Avery, let's crunch some of the numbers. What stood out to you statistically in set number one? Well, the top two hitting leaders of the night are Mia Tuwin and Reese Webker, both Ohio State players. Mia Tuwin has a 1.0 hitting percentage as well as Reese with a .750. Suna Nambia for the Wolverines is the closest to it, but only at a .5. So it really shows that Ohio State is coming out, they're hitting hard, and they're not 
Um, they're playing for every point. They're not going down without a fight. They haven't gone down yet because they won the last set, 25-20, with the Wolverines just short of that first set. You know, and when we spoke about where these two teams were when they faced each other, it was indeed, and not, not to favor that of Michigan, but in their last meeting, they also lost set one 26 to 24 before rolling off three in a row, 25-23, 25-20, and 25-21. So it's a situation where, or excuse me, they won set one, lost set two, or excuse me, one, 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 two, lost three, one, four. Math is not my strong suit, <laughs> that's why I'm a broadcaster. Won the first two, lost the third. So that point being, besides them losing set three, was they did fall in one of the sets to Ohio State, but were still able to come out victorious three to one. Now, the caveat, and again, not to keep stressing the importance of one player, but when you have a senior leader like Allison Jacobs, who has just been everything for this team, for this program. She's been so much for this conference as well. Big Ten having just done a feature on her. You can find it across the Big Ten social media platforms. How much of a leader she is and how much she means to this community of volleyball and the Big Ten community as a whole. That one out of play. Michigan indeed getting the tip. So the R1 going to call out the tip. As we look at the officials today, Christian Kurzik. Your R1, Marty Prokcho, your R2, Henry Chen and Robert Fenn, your line judges. As you saw earlier, it was fun to run into the R1, Christian. Her, he and I called some other Big Ten athletics recently in other states, and it's always fun to see what a small community the Big Ten can be. Over the tip, that one stays in. A little bit different amount of fire with this Michigan Wolverine squad so far in set number three. And that was one of the big things, Avery, and I want you to speak about it. When I was speaking with the coaching staff of Ohio State, they, they said the biggest thing we need to do is take the crowd out. We know it's going to be a sellout crowd. I mean, it's standing room only in some parts of it. And they said if we take this crowd out of it, that gives us an advantage. Right now, 4-1 Wolverines over the Buckeyes. You're starting to see and hear the crowd get involved. Absolutely. You see fans back there shaking their blue pom-poms, cheering for every point. And that pep fam is not something um, to be ignored when it comes to the Buckeyes really fighting um, in this atmosphere of loud and proud Michigan Wolverines. That one out of play. Ohio State getting the serve. It was fun having a conversation earlier today with Coach Aaron Virtue. I said, Coach, I got my first question. I always try to make it a fun one. What was it like playing for Coach Peg Kopik at St. Francis in Wheaton and, you know, just smiled ear to ear, one of the most legendary coaches in all of Illinois athletics, sending so many players to the Division I level, national championships to speak of. You know, and it's nice to also say I also have a head coach of the University of Michigan and an Olympic medal winning coach. Right, Aaron Virtue coming home after the Summer Olympics mm -hmm. in Paris. And I can't imagine that that was not a moment of celebration for all Wolverines, whether abroad or at home. Michigan sent a lot of Wolverines ac ac across the Atlantic mm -hmm. this summer to compete in the Olympics. Um, so I'm sure it was nice having yet another bring home some hardware. You know, it's something to comment on here. Four three-year score blocked back playable for the Wolverines. As I asked Coach, you know, what's the balance been like? You know, a long rally favoring the Buckeyes up and tied at four apiece. You know, handling your duties, not only here at Michigan, but also for the national team. And she goes, I'm up to the challenge. I want the challenge because I know my community here at Michigan, when I'm away, my assistant coaches step up and lead the charge and vice versa. I know that when I'm with the national team, or excuse me, when I'm with Michigan, that my coaching staff at the national level are filling in for me there. You know, and one of those stories very well being, you know, her assistant coach, Benavia Jenkins, in her second season as well, attended the Big Ten Media Days in Chicago a few months ago in August on behalf of head coach Virtue because she was overseas still with the team. And so her and I got to speak then and just shows that, that camaraderie, that tenure, that ability to trust your assistant coaches, that's that's something to be said. And she said that's what makes Michigan special. 
That one goes too far, not able to retrieve it cleanly are the Wolverines, tied at five apiece. Both teams having their bench stand up along the near and far sideline. Number 20, Riley Radar for the Ohio State Buckeyes, grad student out of Louisville, Kentucky for that serve. Set to the near pin. Sign, seal, delivered, I'm yours. The freshman, Ella, Dematrician delivering. Now the serve going to Morgan Burke. Blocked back down. What net presence yet again by Serena Nyambio. Just an absolute presence at the net, offensively and defensively. Sometimes you might have a favored strength. I mean, okay, I'm a little bit better at killing than I am at blocking or better at blocking. Than she does it all. She blocks, she sets, she's whatever you need her to do, she's there. Blocks Both. back, not able to get underneath that one. Both Serena and Jackie are just tall, powerful, and um, really just strong middle blockers that are versatile. They hit, they block, and they're there to fight up at that net. Lawn dot now. Top serve picked up from the back row. High retrieval by Burke. Playable for the Buckeyes. Using the length of the net, that was Close, very close. Not sure if they're gonna challenge that one. You can see the girls on the Ohio State team looking at their coach as if, like, maybe let's fight this one. Some confusion on the court as to what happened with that ball. So Coach Oldenburg again trusting the team saying, should I do a official review? She's not going to. Again, it's tough when we have, uh, you know, we are really up in the stands. We are above the camera well. So we have an even more top-down approach to the view. And again, it may have been close on the in and out versus the near sideline, but went a bit far. On the slide, Cochran on the spot. Cochran back sets this time. Rinse and repeat, third time. Setting it to the near pin once again, playable in the back row this time for the Buckeyes. Looking for the self-preservation, Morgan Burke can't get underneath it cleanly enough. And the Buckeyes back to within one. Subbing in now, number 15, Caitlin Hoffman. The defensive specialist out of Michigan, 5'8". Now, I wouldn't say it, but some Wolverines might call out a traitor to go from Novi, yeah. Michigan, all the way to Ohio State. I don't know. Well, you just did, so I'm just, I mean, <laughs> or you're just saying it could have happened, no, so I'm, we're not. I'm just saying hypothetically, hypo not me, Got not it, me. got it, you'd never, never. Never, know. never. Uppercut with the left hand, looking for the back dump. Poking over, setting up an opportunity for the Wolverines to deliver. Near side, that stays in. Outstanding awareness by Ray. She kept going for power, power, power. Saw the block inch a little bit towards center court. Delivered just to drop over the net. Outstanding placement. Cochran now in the libero Mays jersey. Back set. Looking for the placement yet again. Valentina Vallette says, feed me more as they deliver a outstanding set to the far pin and she just took advantage of Ohio State being a two, or excuse me, being too far towards center court again. Three point lead for the Wolverines, one of their biggest of the evening. On the slide, hitting the tape, that'll be four hits and this may cause a Coach Oldenburg timeout and she does, not to say we are prognosticators up here, but it's the largest lead now for the Wolverines, 11 to seven. Let's talk about the differential, Avery, between set one and set two. Michigan, a lot more controlled in their attack. 
defensively starting to find their groove. What have you seen that Michigan has done here in set number two? Definitely. Well, I think not to harp on that reactivity, but I think Michigan has really been able to kind of come back and sense those openings in the court um, while the point is actively being played out. Um, a lot of great work from middle blockers, um, Mr. Nyambio and Jackie Boney. Um, quite a few. Valentina really letting those serves and those um, hits just full power and getting those points for Michigan. I think that more scrappy, um, quick to notice, quick to react is really paying off for the Wolverines. Yeah, if we look at where these teams are, statistically speaking, in 25-20 is where set one was. But right now, Michigan's starting to creep back in a lot of the key categories. Trailing kills, 18-16. Service aces tied at two apiece. Both teams with four blocks. They're less than two points away from the side out. So what all these numbers which really favored the Buckeyes in set one, Michigan has really started to find their groove and bring it back. And again, it's not as if Michigan necessarily is pulling any puppeteer strings and is mixing up the lineup. Same players that were out there in set one, just hitting the rotations a little bit better. Again, when you're not used to playing this much in this style of rotation, it takes some getting used to. Absolutely. And yet we still see Ohio State, uh, Mia Tuman still with that 1.0 hitting lead. Um, quite a, an aggressive and all-around great player. As she also is high on the leaderboard for digs with five. Um, a really powerful tour, a really powerful player, and a great tool that the Ohio State um, is utilizing during this game. Yeah, Cochran having played most sets last season as well, started a couple games, but played every set this season so far. They're starting libero. On the slide, just trying to redirect the back bump on the free ball. Can the Wolverines take advantage? The quick one over the middle, nice dig by Tuman. Beautiful dig by Cochran. Answering back, libero to libero action. Looking far pin, the double block, playable yet again for the Buckeyes. Trying to separate and able to do so. That's just pinpoint accuracy on that set. They saw that number 17, Jackie Boney, had kind of shifted back to the middle, which she rightfully should have done. The pass went right back to the well. She couldn't shift back to that far pin in time. Buckeyes back within a few 11 to eight. Hasbrook, the libero, had the serve. Breaking through to the other side yet again. And that is how the Wolverines answer right back with an outstanding play at the net. Seem to be having a, not as uh, successful on the front lines for the Ohio State team with Michigan getting around, getting through that block. Um, the Buckeyes will be looking to strengthen that um, as the game goes on and the Wolverines continue to adjust and um, hit around, hit through, and really nail them. Ballette back at the service line. She has 50 aces with which rank second in the conference and ninth nationally. She has added, I mean, she's really had so much more to her game this season. 234 kills this season. Two away from passing her freshman year total in eight less matches and 15 less sets. And uh, yeah, she probably heard us talking about her. <laughs> it was a beautiful ace from Valentina. Now just moving up in those career marks. After this serve, you'll have to kind of explain, Avery, what is so vicious about her serve that's hard to return. Pass to the 10-foot line, sailing up from the Bick. Hitting into the net. Everything's coming up, Maze and Blue. Talk me through this serve now, because she's getting another one. What makes it so lethal? Well, and from my humble opinion, it is just the power that she has. Her um, approach under serve is a little bit different from the rest of the U.S.-born players that we're seeing. Um, and I can't help but to think that that might have something to do with just the sheer amount of force that she is able to put behind that ball when it comes to serving. There are many girls I would not want to receive a ball from, and Valentina is high on that list. She's up there as the Buckeyes able to get a point. Hey, and it's, you bring up a very good point with so many international players now making their way to the States for their collegiate careers. 
the power serve is still very prevalent at the high school and club level in Europe, especially in South America. And so that is not surprising in the slightest that she comes in with pure power. A lot of these stateside youth programs doing more finesse, more floating, more directional serves. Still power from overseas. So just like that, the Buckeyes back to within four. Having the serve yet again. Number nine, Mia Tuman with the serve. Sophomore from Pennsylvania. Not able to retrieve it, and another point for the Buckeyes. Coach Oldenburg all smiles as they're now rallying back to within three, and now you have to ask yourself, if you're Coach Virtue, do you reach a point where, okay, they're coming back, maybe we need to stop this bleeding and that won't be the case in that scenario as really trying to teardrop it in and not able to do so falling and hitting the bottom of the tape. Just a bit too short, but number 14 for the Wolverines, Kendall Ray going back to serve. Pass back far pin over the double block. Nice pick up by Vallette. Tool block. But it goes out of play. Give the tool kill to the Wolverines. Bust out the chainsaw. As Michigan back up by five. Ray to serve. Joust potential at the net roof. And the roof is in Fuego. Jackie Boney moving up the list. Once again, for her net presence, and Michigan really with a stranglehold on set number two. Avery, talk me through when you have a pass that just goes too far to the net and it presents either a joust or in that case a roof opportunity, your eyes gotta get so wide saying, oh, here's a chance for oh, me. Oh, absolutely, especially as a DS or libero, you're in the back row, ready for that, whatever comes from it, whether it be off a block, a tip, um, but in the front, I can only imagine it's that ready, reactive, wide-eyed, um, and ultimately fighting for the ball not to drop on your side. Boney now leading the charge offensively for Michigan. Six kills, Vallette at five. Boney, how about this? Six for 11, she's hitting 545. That's, uh, that's a good number. That's a pretty good number. That's a great number. This could shape up to be a big night for Boney as she um, continues to really kill it. No pun intended when it comes yeah. to her hitting percentage as well as the blocks as we talked about earlier. Um, ninth overall in school history. When I was speaking earlier today with Coach Virtue, I said, talk me through what this you know, is going to look like tonight. And she said, well, the first thing, it's a dogfight. It's always a dogfight against one of your bitter rivals. And I said, well, how do you practice for that? How do you practice for having maybe some different players get some more minutes? And the key phrase, this needs to be a t-shirt. So, you know, <laughs> let whoever know that they're going to make it a t-shirt. It says, worthy pursuits. She said, everything you do in your life, everything you do on the court, practice or game, is it a worthy pursuit of your time? And she said, I have players out there on the court getting swings, getting reps, hours and hours before the match, worthy pursuits. to the far side, that stays in. An absolute missile on that far pin. Waiting to see for the R2 to verify the substitution here. It was an aggressive whistle. He's like, wait, hold on now, <laughs> hold on. Yeah, sometimes having multiple substitutions can create a little confusion up at the board, but they're working through it. And number 14 for the Buckeyes. Um, Emmy Selman is back with the serve. To the near side, nice block back. Once again, number 20, Raider stepping up. When we were speaking with the Michigan staff and about you know how different is this year compared to last year, year in year two, she goes, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, such a new team. Seven new people have come into this program. You know, that's almost half your team 
and they're still finding themselves 500 in conference play. And they are seven points away from tying this up at one set apiece. Absolutely. It's been really amazing to see the upperclassmen on the Wolverines uh, taking and um, really uh, help the, girl, the younger girls adjust to this new level of play. Mm -hmm. um, it's been really um, awesome just to see that team camaraderie grow and evolve, even though they are missing key players like Allison Jacobs, um, a leader on and off the court. Buckeyes not going quietly into this Ann Arbor night. Back to within four, but they need to string a few along. Playable for Cochran. Set to the 10 foot line. And we have a potential injury right now at number 31. Eloise Brandewi out of Columbus, Ohio is getting checked on. It might, I mean, it, again, you being the player in your own right, if it gets you right, but right on the nose, right between the eyes, that, that does not feel good. No, I can't imagine. I fear I never made it to the front lines as a 5'5 DS yeah. libero, but especially with hard, those hard-hitting girls, I cannot imagine being at the quite literally taking it to the face. Um, but it does seem like she's good to continue. Head coach um, Jen Oldenburg did come down the court, make sure everything was okay. Maybe a few smiles, just making sure, wow, that was a toughie, but she yeah. took it. She's well, back. And, and good job by the officials, especially the R2, to come up just secondarily to say, hey, are you good? You have to make sure there's no blood on any of the extremities, otherwise you have to have that taken care of. But just powering through the pride of Columbus, Ohio. Near side, that stays in. Slide, slide, slibbity slide. Michigan delivers. Back up by four. It's almost an exact repeat, only the opposite teams what we saw in set one. Michigan, every time they tried to come back in set one, Ohio State would just find those few extra points. Oh! On the overpass, swinging the lumber. Once again, the freshman, Ella Demetrician, the pride of Appleton, chopping down some apple trees with that swing. <laughs> Once are, again. <laughs> we are seeing some big moves from Ella Demetrician tonight. Oh, they're saying points gonna go to Ohio State. And it looks like Coach Virtue might ask for an official review, and it is. So we have our first official review of the night. So what the R2 is saying, and you can help explain to the viewers at home, again, alongside Avery Walsh, I'm Peter Ferrari. Avery, the R2 gestured that in that overpass kill attempt, her follow through hit the top of the net. Now. We weren't necessarily privileged from so high up. <laughs> it's a great vantage point, but we couldn't necessarily see if the net moved at all. So that's what the officials are looking at right now. Again, six plus cameras just for that, including you can kind of see in front of the R1, but if not on the far side by the far pin, there are two net cams just for that very purpose. So it's gotta be, you know, we go back to, it's gotta be so challenging. Again, you have this overpass. You know, like we saw earlier, when the kill came in for Boney, like, oh my goodness, this is gonna be an easy point that maybe the follow through is just a bit too much. Absolutely, it's real easy when you get carried away with those moments of just excitement. Of overpasses, honestly, and not that I've ever been a middle blocker, or middle hitter, but those are moments of pure celebration. It's it's all yours, and so it's, it's fairly easy to imagine that just a little bit too much of a sight yep. excitement and ending up in the net. But ref referees are still um, looking at the play using, what, like we talked about, one of those or a few of those six cameras to review that call. Yeah, Demetrician, you know, she had 146 kills coming in today with 130 digs. Just one of three players on the team with triple digit kills and digs. And also among the Power Four conferences, she is one of 25 players averaging over 1.9 kills per set and one of seven in the Big Ten. And also this, how about this for how special, and the official call is gonna stay. 
with Ohio State. But just to finish that thought, she's the only freshman in the conference with over 100 kills and over 100 digs and one of 56 freshmen nationally and only one of six in the Power Four. She's a good freshman, how about that? Yeah, we've got quite a few of those. Um, number six is a huge recruit for the Buckeyes and number 14 was the number one um, recruiter out of recruitment out of Virginia for class of 2024. So we have quite a few special freshmen on this court tonight. Another point to the Buckeyes. They have clawed back to within three. So Coach Virtue may not necessarily use a timeout being that that review was a glorified timeout in its own respect. So let's see what Blue can do down by, or excuse me, up by three. They're cleaning off the near side of the court yet again. Packed house, you can't really see from this vantage point, but right under where the camera well is, again, just people all over the stands. What an environment here at Keene Arena. Over the middle and through the woods. <laughs> what a play. Nyambio delivers a crushing blow to get Michigan back in the plus column. You see number 14, Kendall Ray, back on the court after substituting for Carly Grayskovich. It's off the tape, but playable for Ohio State. Set over the middle, block back. She must be feeling fine, fine, fine. Eloise Brandewi, the 6'3 sophomore, able to deliver a beautiful rejection right over the middle. Nyambio tried to get a chicken wing on it on the way back down, wasn't able to do so. Do the Buckeyes have a run? They need it now. Tool again. Nice play, Niambio, right over the middle. Thought they might have been setting to her. The set went over, she pulled the arm down. Near antenna kill once again, Ray with a Ray gun. Blue needs three. Low pass by Hasbrook, but still playable. And that just shows that trust in one another on the Buckeyes side that even with an ill-advised pass off the one touch, still able to deliver when it got to three. 22, 19, your score. On the hop serve yet again by Hasbrook. Joust at the net, Vallette pushes it back up. Nice job over the middle yet again. Jackie Boney, them bones, them bones, then scary bones. It's it's too past Halloween, I, you know. <laughs> you got to work on your Thanksgiving puns. Ah, there you go. Okay. Have a little bit of time to work on that. The season and year has truly gone fast. As Michigan two away from set one. Really taking her time before the delivery is Tooman. Jackie Dooney with a nice pop up after reception of the serve. Might not have gone the way the Wolverines had hoped. Just going a bit too much is Selman. Selman the freshman out of the Academy of the Holy Cross. We are at set two point. As Big Blue is looking to tie it up at one set apiece. Over the middle, underneath, not able to get it. Nice one set. That's that quick set that sometimes Ohio State likes to deploy. Saw it there to great success. Can the Buckeyes find three more? Londot right now leading the charge for Ohio State. Eight kills for number 22. That Wolverine crowd is getting loud for this rally, hoping to get that point back and win the set. Playable for the Buckeyes. Set to the near pin, blocked back! Great net 
presence and awareness for Michigan. They come away victorious in set number two, 25 to 21. We'll take a timeout tied at one set apiece. We'll be back for set number three on Big Ten Plus. Welcome back to Big Ten Plus. The Wolverines and the Buckeyes tied at one set apiece here from Cliff Keen Arena in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Hello, everybody. Alongside Avery Walsh, I'm Peter Ferreri. We've seen the best of both teams for what they've produced in the first two sets. But let's look at the upcoming schedule. Let's start with the home Wolverines of Michigan. What are the next few games? The Wolverines will be on the road for the next three games, playing number nine, Purdue, in Indiana, Michigan State in East Lansing, Minnesota, in Minneapolis before they take it back home with Maryland back in Cliff Keen Arena. The Buckeyes will play um, at Illinois and before taking on Maryland and Rutgers back in their home of Coveley Center in Columbus, Ohio. Some dance moves going on the court and in the booth. Let's look ahead now at Ohio State's upcoming schedule. For the Buckeyes, again, when we look at what they have at hand, after today, you know, Illinois, Maryland, Rutgers, and then a receiving votes, Washington. You know, circle that one on the 22nd. That's going to be something. Absolutely, although I don't think I can ever get used to the additions of UCLA, USC, Oregon, and Washington back in the, or not You didn't have the that dance down? <laughs> the, 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 the this, the this, and then in the hands? You didn't have that? 
I don't know what they're doing. Then, uh, I don't uh, either. We're uh, see, we uh, seem to be in some sort of exchange with the Michigan Volleyball Is team. it a TikTok thing? Uh, if it is, <laughs> I'm out of the loop. <laughs> Again, live here, participating with the crowd, the fans, the players. That's what happens on Big Ten. That one hitting the scoreboard with no regard for human life. <laughs> Buckeyes up one to nothing. Both teams having lost a set during this tonight's game are scrappy and they're definitely wanting to pull off the win. So I feel like we'll have a few more of those powerful with no care for life serves or hits. Not able to punch it up. Nice play over the middle, Nyambio. And again, not to mention it again, but with Jacob Sout, you really want to lean on who are your leaders. And Nyambio is the essential leader for this Wolverine squad. Absolutely. Now, Libero, uh, number 19, Maddie Cochran, back with the serve for the Wolverines. Trying to poke it over, playable for Michigan. Far pin underneath. Playable yes to, yet again for Londot. A quiet eight kills for Londot today. They're going for her again. Can she find it the third time of this rally? Playable for Michigan. Flicked back row, long rally here. Punched on the uppercut. Can the Wolverines deliver? Welcome to the campfire, out of play. Good communication by Cochran, the libero. And as a former libero yourself, you mentioned earlier in the contest, that's key number one of your role as libero. You know you're gonna be in the back row, is that communication and your awareness of where you are in the cart, or court and where the ball is gonna go. Absolutely. Maddie Cochran is no stranger to the back row. Um, as Libera for all of the games this season for the Wolverines, she's consistent, she's confident, and she really does um, order around the court, uh, when, especially with Jacob's absence, like we've said a few times tonight. Mm -hmm. But Cochran just stepping up and being that big um, leader on the court. Selman to serve. Sends it right to Cochran. The quick one set, joust opportunity, no it's not. Campfire point for the Buckeyes. It seems the longer the rallies tonight have kind of favored Ohio State, and I think it's because when you have your core lineup in, you're used to where you need to rotate on each and every part of the possession. Absolutely, and just that awareness of who you're playing with, knowing what, they, what they're used to getting, what their strengths are on that court. Uh, not that the Wolverines um, haven't been playing together very often, as this is a key group, but that might just give the Buckeyes a slight advantage. Awareness yet again at the net. Presence unmatched in the Big Ten. Jackie Boney out of Brookhaven, Georgia. The R2 having a little bit of a conversation here talking to the officials, or excuse me, talking to the coaches. Again, not privy to what that conversation may or may not be, but we're back underway, tied at three apiece here on Big Ten Plus. Vallette, power serve to the back row. That one stays in, not able to shift far enough as Ray, but again, I don't want to necessarily say Ray was out of position. When, you're, when you have it coming that fast at you, it's hard to adjust straight down the line. Absolutely. With the being back row, you're just kind of there and everywhere at the exact same time. Serving now is Raider on the slide. Going to the far tape. Nice setting. I always say the quarterback, the unsung hero, Morgan Burke, set near pin. Didn't like what she saw the second time around. Pushed it to the far side. Wide open spaces. Michigan ties it. Now it seems they, they have potentially their own serving song. Would you have a, a particular song you would use like okay as your, you know, like a walk up song in baseball, but a serving song? Oh boy, well I think, think about it. Think I know, I'm it. I'm thinking. From the ten foot line, that one out of play. I think it would have to I think it would have to depend. Okay. If it was a little crowd favorite moment, hot mm. to go seems to be getting they, they, the crowd in uh, Cliff Keen active and up out of their seats tonight. 
Yeah, like if you can get that participation from the crowd, that that's a good idea. Absolutely. That, if it has a dance to it. Right. Easy to follow along. You know the words after you've heard yeah. it once. What was that song that Lady Gaga sang that they used in that show Wednesday? I know that was that was popular. I'm going to think of this now. Oh, boy. Do you know what I'm talking about? Wednesday, Lady Gaga. Have you heard of Lady Gaga? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Don't you worry. <laughs> Have you heard of Mother Monster? I'm just asking. Yes. Don't worry. I'm young, but I'm not that young. Oh. <laughs> Number 22 for the Buckeyes, grad student back with the serve. Very consistent and powerful figure on the court tonight. Two Wolverines run into each other, but still playable for Michigan. Looking for the left hand dump. Oh, nice job getting underneath of this Cochran. Play continues on. Double block yet again, two hand uppercut. Keeping it alive is Webker. And Michigan comes away with a huge point after a long rally, and it was almost expected again the longer the rallies have favored the Buckeyes, Michigan able to find their groove back up by one. Absolutely. And from the Wolverines, number six, Ellie White, freshman setter, um, is back there serving. That one, a service error, so White so what you see often at this level is the key freshmen kind of earn their stripes by being one of the serve specialists. White not able to deliver there, tied back up at six. Absolutely, I'm scared I might have jinxed that one because my next comment was going to be a very consistent server tonight, but. Yeah, you jinxed it, but that's I, fine. But I didn't that's say fine. it. I didn't say it though, so I, it not entirely on me. For those of you that were expecting a sweep in either direction, I fear that you may have been mistaken as we just have, again, a heavyweight battle between these two squads this Friday night in November. Seven to six now, Buckeyes take the lead. Set one, Ohio State had the lead, kept it most of the time. Michigan brought it back within one a few times but ended up coming away victorious. Flip the script, what you saw in set number two. Now, both teams kind of have that feel for one another. And now it's just going to be blow for blow, point for point the rest of the way. With both teams having one set, it's whoever gets the next two out of three. Beautiful save by Cochran. What a pancake by Cochran. The back set, chicken wing, playable. Looking back row to the near pin. Another nice up by Vallette. Oh my goodness, oh, wow. the absolute flamethrower. The freshman, Demetrician, what a shot. Wow. This scrappiness on the court for both teams um, is just one of the many <laughs> results of this rivalry between Ohio State and, as they like to see, as they like to say, yeah. the TTUN. Pass to the near pin. That one out of play. I mean, that one just r went right off the solar plexus of number 15, Caitlin Hoffman. Coaches checked on her. Back row, they were aiming for her to see if she had, it was maybe a bit discombobulated, but answering right back, Emmy Selman. Tying it up at eight. That's what's so unique about this match tonight is that you, you know you may feel, okay, oh, well, Michigan getting a few points in a row, but then you look at right back up at the scoreboard and we're tied at eight. Absolutely. I have a feeling this is going to be a long night. Both teams are just fighting for every point. And that scrappiness with number nine, Mia Tuma at the net, just shutting that down. Yeah, no self-preservation there. But as we look at where we stand in the Big Ten Conference, kind of log jammed in the middle. Michigan, again, six and six, one win behind Illinois. Ohio State, a click behind UCLA. Michigan, 
delivering points, tying it back up at nine. Serena and Nyambia, just a force to be reckoned with at that net. Number nine, Ella Demetrician from the Wolverines with that serve. Number 20 for the Buckeyes, Riley Rader, just finding that spot right at the line um, and getting the point for the Buckeyes. All right, I got the lyrics. I'll dance, dance, dance oh. with my hands, hands, hands above my head. Oh, okay, now I, I see it in my head, I yeah. understand. I, I fear I haven't seen the the Wednesday, the Adams family, Got but it. I do understand the reference. Well, the kill there by number 14, Ray is saying, I won't cry for you. <laughs> there you go. Having some fun here on Big Ten Plus. Friday night, 10-10, tied at one set apiece. Are you not entertained? Buckeyes take the one point lead substitution. And again, it's a situation where in set one, Coach Virtue had to use a few of the timeouts. In set two, set Coach Oberg had to use the timeouts. Now in set three, when it's such a deadlock, it's just can either team get a little bit of momentum, rally a few points together? It hasn't happened so far. Pushed a little bit too far, looking for the perfect placement was Valette to no avail. few international players on the court today. Valette being one of them. That one stays in. Michigan heading to Italy next summer for a team trip. I did volunteer to be a broadcasting chaperone and they said, okay, well, that's maybe puts me on the list but the very bottom. So you're saying there's a chance. Right, right. When the Wolverines went back, oh. oh! What placement, like paintball. That'll be a mark. Absolutely. To finish that thought, when the Wolverines went back in 2018, they visited mm -hmm. Milan and Venice, two, in my opinion, of the most breathtaking places. And I mean, and honestly, in the world, let alone in Italy. Can't lie, I might also have to ask them if they need a that, there you student go. broadcaster chaperone. Well, as that one stays in for the Buckeyes, I mean, you have you got a lot to offer the team. You know, hey, I can help translate in different parts of the country. I can just be an emotional support. Right. Like, hey, how much do you like it here? Oh, it's <laughs> great. Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make my keep somehow. On the back set, just kind of swatting at it, but that's all you need if you're bony. Kind of was shuffling the feet, but again, when you have the length that she does at six foot four, you don't have to be like the five eight five nine player and jump out of the ceiling. You can just kind of set the feet whatever way necessary and swing it over. Not able to swing up high enough that time was Ray. Eyes regained that slimmest of slim one point lead. Substitution coming in now, number 10 for Michigan. Carly Greskovich, the defensive specialist out of Manhattan Beach, California. One of the other Californians. Oh, nice job, just placement again. She's a freshman, but plays at a sophomore level. Just absolutely finding the placement, knowing when to hit it hard, weathering weather just to settle down. Junior number eight, Mira Chobra, making her debut tonight at the service line for the Wolverines. Chobra, another one, six foot three. Coach Virtue likes the height when she's on that recruiting trail. Crowd waiting for a chance to erupt. Set near pin, playable, out of the back row against some rotational players in now. 
For the Wolverines, double block opportunity playable for the Buckeyes. Back row, nice side swing on the free ball. Buckeyes back set blocked, playable again for Ohio State. And Chopra sends that one towards the stands. Long, long rally, but that time gonna favor that of Ohio State. Couldn't help but seeing Coach Oldenburg ready, very involved, almost looked like she was ready to go on the court and help out her team in her little, in her stance. So we are gonna have an official review. Coach Virtue saying that she claims there was a tip at some point throughout that. Now, for all intents and purposes, I'm not gonna necessarily try to guess when that was, because that was arguably the longest rally of the night. So a tip could have happened at multiple points. But if you're Coach Virtue, again, not the worst idea, a huge middle of the set point swing one way or the other can be absolutely vital trying to get set three victory. But again, we appreciate you being with us on Big Ten Plus. When looking at, again, where these teams are, where they've gone, where they're going. One thing Ohio State said when speaking especially of Selman, you know, we've spoken about her so much tonight. She actually missed the preseason and non-conference play, but she's been available Ever since then, she started strong, kind of got banged up again, went to ease back in, and now, hey, it's time, it's all systems go. And that's what you want to see if you're Ohio State, like who can, you know, especially Reese as well, Webker. So you have two players that throughout the season haven't had that full availability. They're there now and they're making a difference so far. 15-14 current lead for the Buckeyes after this review as it extends on. You know, when we spoke about as well when I was speaking with this coaching staff of Ohio State, hey, you're in a sellout crowd. What's it gonna be like? And she said, look, we love, love being in a big environment. She said, we know it's gonna be hostile. We just wanna get the crowd against them. And I really like how they put it, like meaning we want them to be quiet and that's exactly what's happening right now. So Ohio State is gonna maintain the point so Coach Virtue thought there might have been a tip. There was not. 15-14 Buckeyes lead. And again, I think something to be said, Avery, it's easier said than done to quiet a sellout crowd like has happened tonight. Absolutely. And especially with this um, rivalry, the Wolverines are not going to be quiet on this one. Every point is a point um, fought for and celebrated as such. So right now they're taking a timeout. It's t-shirt toss time here at Keene Arena. And you know, myself being a college student years ago at my point, there's not much you don't do for a t-shirt, <laughs> especially if it's free. Absolutely. You think they can reach us up here? I don't know, what if we wait? <laughs> what if we wait? Let's see if this guy's got a cannon. <laughs> Let's see if he should be playing on Saturdays. Right? He didn't see us. All right, well, you know what, we tried. I will say this in, 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 in all you know, fun and the conversation we're having, I also, as you and I mentioned in the pregame, I was in Greek life as well. And between the amount of college shirts I got, between <laughs> just t-shirt tosses, giveaways, dorm life, and then Greek life, I actually last year had a quilt one of those t-shirt quilts uh, made, and it was a gift from my, smart. From, you know, the family chipped in and got me that, and it's all of my, you know, whatever event it was, whatever charity or one-off thing. That's so if you smart. keep developing, you know, your right. t-shirt collection. No, freshman year, we were told by um, upperclassmen to come with no t-shirts because you will quickly have a closet full. And um, unfortunately, the tote underneath my bed is in agreement with that. Well, that means you might have enough for your own t-shirt one day. That's so true. Or your own quilt, My I quilt, say. yeah. No, I was picking up what you were. Down. Oh, they make so many different ones now. You could buy a full-size quilt. You could do a lap quilt. <laughs> if you just want a lap quilt. They could do a double-sided one. All kinds of options. 15-14, your score. Again, for Avery Walsh on Peter Ferrari. 41-33 to is the kill differential for the night. So Ohio State, you know, Michigan brought it really close in set number two, the beginning of set three. 
And that's what you want out of the media timeout. Bang! Nyambio just delivering another crushing blow, and that's the type of set she likes. We spoke about it in one of the first points of the contest, delivering yet again. Nice uppercut by Burke all over the court this evening. Ballette just trying to find a placement in that back corner. More times than not, she's had that accuracy. Just wasn't able to find it there. Ohio State up by one point. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that either team has been up by more than two or three points during this set. It is no. quite a close game. It has been no more than two at any point in this set. And just like that, we've reached the two-point lead for the Buckeyes. I think we might have jinxed that one. Timeout going to be called by Coach Virtue. So between the review, the media timeout, and that timeout, Coach Virtue and Michigan, a lot of time to kind of talk about things. They're hoping to come out of this with a coach's point. What have you seen so far in set number three? Again, statistically speaking, Ohio State pulling ahead in some categories, a higher hitting percentage, 215 to 178. But a big one for me, you would think it would favor the other way, but Michigan, four to two, the ace differential. So, I mean, it's as evenly matched as you're gonna get, but it just seems that Ohio State, whether they're down one or up one, they've been able to get some two for ones every so often. Absolutely, I take back what I said about set number two and the Buckeyes may be having a little bit of issue at the net because they are coming back strong um, during this set and I think that's really contributing to part of their success is just having that strong block, that strong front line and not letting much get past. Last time these two teams met on October the 13th, Emily Laundot led all players with 24 kills. Well today, how about this? Midway through set number three, already a double-double, 10 kills and 15 digs. What a player. She's one of those silent assassin type players. You know, Absolutely. just comes out, cool, calm, and collected. She's not jumping up, she's not causing a ruckus. You know, smile here and there, but nonetheless, just delivering everything she needs to Absolutely. for Ohio State. So Ohio State gonna have the serve out of the timeout. We appreciate you being with us on Big Ten Plus through the libero having the serve of Olivia Hasbrook. Push to the far side. To no avail. Back row, was it touched? It is going to be a touch. Just like that, the Buckeyes up by three. Largest lead for either team in set number three. This is such a crucial game for both of these teams at this point of the season. Michigan trying to prove themselves in Big Ten play. Ohio State, again, both teams so young in a lot of aspects, relying on some of your senior leaders to show the way that falls in. And Cochran not able to get there. It is a four point lead on a 3-0 scoring run for the Buckeyes. Number six, Olivia Hasbrook with the serve once again. A talented freshman coming from Eureka, Missouri. She holds the her high school of Eureka High School record career digs. A powerful player, especially one as a libero uh, during her first year here at Ohio State. Well, Valette said, I think it's time enough, you feed me and I deliver. She door dashed that one to the back row and in. <laughs> Just clearing the net. Set back near pin, right off the left hand of Nyambio. And Ohio State has reached the final five of set number three. The last time this rivalry went five, November the 27th, 2019. So a few years ago, 
and that was a loss in five. Ohio State took the victory, I should say. And how about this, set number five of that contest, 20 to 18. So they needed extras in set number five. Wow. So just as you thought, Michigan might have had a little bit of momentum, not able to find it there. Reese Webker now checking in as they're picking up some of that condensation again. As stated, Ohio, oh, that one stays in an ace. Oh, what a huge, huge opportunity for the Buckeyes now to close things out. Three points away from set three victory. They have been on an absolute tear. Coach Virtue uses her second and final timeout of set number three as Justin Bieber's baby playing in the background. But talk me through it now. If, we, if you're Michigan, it was back and forth. You're tied at 15, you're tied, ne next thing you know, wait a second, this is a, you know, a seven to two run, all Buckeyes. If you're in the huddle right now with the Wolverines, what's that conversation might look like? Honestly, it's gotta be a tough conversation. The Wolverines are fighting point for point, but I think it's just that um, scrappiness that it's really great. It's working to their, their benefit, but also when they have the serve, when they have the ball in their control, just taking that moment to kind of take a deep breath, play their game, because we know Michigan Volleyball is a powerhouse and a force not to be reckoned with. So I think if I'm in that huddle and I'm giving them a word of advice it would just be to when it's on our side or when we're serving to just take it take a minute and just own the ball own the play appreciate you being with us on big 10 plus michigan and ohio state definitely using as much of that time out as they want ohio state on the flip side Again, every time Michigan may have had a lead by even a point, Ohio State answered right back. They, they have not lost any sense of composure. And again, we spoke about it earlier in this contest, that loss in five against Minnesota, they claim was a turning point for this squad. And it very well may be so, as we've seen so far, they need to close and not allow the Wolverines any breathing room in this set. To the far pin, the rollover. Playable, nice pancake. Once again for Tooman, off the tip. And just like that, the Buckeyes coming away with another point. That 14, Emmy Selman from Ohio State is just a force both in back row and um, up at front. She is just a player, a player to watch. Good communication out of the back row by Ray. Now, Michigan is not out of this yet. They find that first crucial point, but they need a run and they need it now. Nobody else you want back of the serving line, however, than the power serve of Valette. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Morgan Berg finding that spot in the back corner. Just perfect placement. I just let that one breathe. You just felt something special was going to happen on the court. And indeed, it does so. Ohio State forced to use a timeout of their own. That serve for such a discombobulation on the serve receive for Ohio State that when it overpassed to Burke. She just set it ever so gently toward the back row. Outstanding play. As we look at some of the leaders, Selman 12 kills, Raider with 11, Lawn Dot sitting at 10. No Michigan player at double digit kills. Nine for Boney. Indiano at seven in her own right. And then number nine, the freshman, Demetrician with seven as well as Ray, so. But again, Nyambio also sitting with three blocks. 
Boney with five blocks, so needless to say, that middle blocker position is really where the strength of Michigan is now with the absence of Jacobs. Absolutely. Nambia staying at that .5 hitting percentage, even throughout set three, is really uh, just one of the many indicators that we've seen tonight of how instrumental she is in this game. We spoke about Boney and where she is on the all-time list. With five blocks today, she has now moved up tied for eighth in the all-time mark with Julia Strum, who played 1987 to 1990. Also surpassed Beth Karpiak from 05 to 08. And an ace, pulling an ace out of her sleeve, the magician, number 13, Valentina Vallette. Just what the doctor ordered for the Wolverines. <laughs> 23-20, can the run continue? It's been a 3-0 run so far for Big Blue. Oh, and her toe stepped on the line. Uh, a really crucial mistake for the Wolverines as this now puts Ohio State at 24 points to Michigan's 20. Yeah, and that's something where we saw it easily from our vantage point. And so it's a situation where maybe if it's a little closer, they let it go, but that was you know, toe clearly over the line. Do the Wolverines have four more in a row? To send it to extras. Buckeyes block, they say no, they don't. Set three, going the way of the Buckeyes in the same fashion, in the same style as it did in set one, 25 to 20. The visiting Buckeyes trying to come in to hostile Keen Arena on a blue out evening. They'll find out if they can take it in four or will the Wolverines force it to five. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back on Big Ten Plus.
for Avery Walsh, I'm Peter Ferrari, back live on Big Ten Plus. Two sets to one, the visiting Buckeyes have come in to Michigan. They're one of their objectives, the coaching staff said, was to take the sellout crowd out of the game. They've done that and then some, Avery. Absolutely. The Buckeyes have really embraced this loud, blue out um, Wolverine rivalry game and really just kind of run with it. Um, well, I shouldn't say that because if you weren't uh, tuning into our, the last few sets, it la set three in particular was just point for point. Um, some tenacity and quick reactive from both sides, but Buckeyes pulling away 25-20. underway now in set number four. Buckeyes looking to close out in four. A huge road win to say the least. Looking far pin, off the tip. Nobody can get there in the back row. Buckeyes start off strong, one nothing. And again, the last thing you want if you're the Buckeyes is to allow it to go to five, because A, you know the crowd's gonna be right back into the contest, and on top of that, B, anything can go when you get to set number five. Absolutely. Number six, Libero, Olivia Hasbrook with the serve once again for the Buckeyes. Beautiful hit by uh, number 13, Valentina for the Wolverines. The quick one set. That's where she excels. Number 17, Jackie Boney yet again, leading the charge offensively and defensively for Michigan. to the far pin, falling away. Valletti able to get underneath it. Oh, what an ISO block. The crowd in stunned fashion, but the bench for Ohio State explodes. Selman says, thank you, next. Absolutely, that, that kind of block out is hard to come by um, and even harder to play off. You seem or it seems, I should say, any time the Buckeyes get a lead, it just seems such a, like such a strong lead that even though it could be tied or one or two, you know, sometimes Michigan, again, you're without, you're one of your vocal leaders. But with that being said, tied at two, long road to go. Let's see what the Wolverines can do. Pancake, successful. Tool, successful, point for the Wolverines. And again, we've stated it, Avery, if Michigan could just roll a few points together in a row, that's how you get the crowd back into it in fast manner. Absolutely, building that momentum is really a powerful tool that the Buckeyes seem to have um, captivated, but the Wolverines, um, as we've been saying, maybe a two for one tonight and building that momentum might be a, a key strategy. You know, and setting up all those attacks, of course, Morgan Burke was the setter of the week in the Big Ten back on the 7th of October, so just a month ago. So it's nice to have one of the best setters in the conference on your side as the Wolverines now, nice little run. I know it's early on in set number four, but again, what did we see in set number two? Got that early lead, kept the lead, came away victorious in the set. Absolutely. I can't help but think of the game you're referencing earlier where it was 2018 in the fifth mm. set, and I think that we, safe to say that we might be seeing a repeat of that close um, game once again tonight. Well, again, Ohio State, I believe just gonna turn around and head home right after the contest. So why not stay late for all the fans here in attendance? <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Good show. Might as well put on a good show while everyone's here. Not able to get to the back row. And that's what was missing in the last set is that accuracy of Michigan to really force the hand of the Buckeyes to get out of system. They're doing so quite successfully now up five to three and one of the serve specialists. Yet again, you've highlighted her serviceability is Mira Chopra, the senior out of Champaign, Illinois. Again, height in the back row.
Chopra sets to the near side. Coming from the big Chopra from the back row, nice dig. Falling away. Opportunity for the Buckeyes from the big again, playable. Nice decoy slide, long rally. Morgan Burke with a good save. Not able to get there as Hasbrook. We were both excited at the same time. <laughs> it was a really great rally between the two teams. Wolverines pulling away for Chopra to serve once again, but an excellent rally between the two. Again, Morgan Burke fearless in her setting. Misguided pass, roll over on the free ball, out of system. Where the Buckeyes yet again. Power shot. Asbrook gets underneath it, but not good enough. We may be close to a timeout. Seven to three, your score. A 3-0 scoring run now for the Wolverines. Coach Oldenburg clapping the girls on, hoping to stop this Wolverine run and get a point back for the Buckeyes. Far side, isolation, nice job once again by Chopra. What a catalyst she's been in since subbing in. Directional set, Buckeyes look far pin. Down and in, parting the seas. Number 17, Webker just saw the lane, took advantage, went right toward that line judge, and that's one of the few lanes that you're gonna find that Michigan allows. Serving now, Raider. Left hand dump, flush it down for number seven, Morgan Burke. Omaha, eight to four. I feel if you're from Omaha, you could say that. Right, I would agree. I lived there for a few years, pleasant place. <laughs> Home of the Huskers, another Big Ten team. Nine to four, Michigan absolutely stringing along a flurry of kills again. It is a, might be a, a bit brisk outside, but we'll just say warm conditions here. <laughs> Mind you, heat rises and we're up a few stories, but nonetheless, Ohio State gonna call a timeout. Talk me through it now. It's rare we've had to talk about it in this fashion today. Again, for Avery Walsh and Peter Ferrari. Avery, talk me through what's happening in Ohio State right now. This is kind of uncharted waters for them to be down by five early on in a set. Right, well, honestly, this is kind of a repeat of set number two for the Wolverines. The Buckeyes and Wolverines seem to be splitting or taking set for set, but the Buckeyes really just need to stop the Wolverines because they know when they do get the ball back, they can go on that roll and they can get those, as we've been saying, those two for ones and building that momentum. So I think right now in that huddle, it's gotta be, let's get the ball back. Let's get, let's turn it around. Yeah. Let's stop them before we get too far. You know, a, a talking point as well, and I think it bears mentioning, you brought it up earlier in the contest and it was such a good get, is that Mira Chopra, you know, she tallied 18 aces last year, which was third on the team, trailing only Vallette and Murray. In her first two years combined, she played in just 12 matches, 17 sets, with one kill, two assists, and two blocks. Well, last year just exploded, 24 matches, 72 sets, eight kills, two assists, seven blocks, and the aforementioned 18 aces. What an impact she's been since she subbed in. Absolutely. These upperclassmen, although they may be fewer in numbers, the impact that they have made on the Michigan Volleyball Program, is, Michigan volleyball program is not one uh, that goes unnoticed, especially for um, the Serena, for Mira, for Mira, for so many of those um, girls looking into their few years at the last few years at Michigan Volleyball. Hap served by Burke. Block down. Welcome to the block party. Keen Arena welcomes you. Michigan up by six, one of their biggest leads of the evening. The
the back set. Nice tool, able to come away with it. A much needed point for the Buckeyes in Lawn Dot. Absolutely, and going to serve for the Buckeyes is number 22, Emily Olandon, a super consistent player with an excellent serve, and like we've been saying, she's kind of a silent killer. She gets business done, but you never want to underestimate the power mm. that she makes in the court. Suspended in the air, the Skywalker, Serena Nyambio. What a play over the middle. She's so fun to watch. Serving now is the freshman, Demetrician. From the big, oh, rifle of a shot. Ohio State, now can they string some along? They haven't necessarily found themselves in this position, but in checks Hoffman, one of the serve specialists for the Buckeyes. On the season, Hoffman, 12 aces. How about lucky number 13? I needed to check the notes. You just kind of <laughs> felt, okay, with such a run that Michigan's been on, they may not be used to the style of serve. She delivers, does just that. Out of system, Michigan, able to roll it over. Far pin, nice dig in the back row by Demetrician. Point gonna go to the Wolverines. Wolverines seem to be successful during this fourth set at stopping the Buckeyes before they can get on one of their rolls um, where the points seem to fly in just a bit too easy for the Wolverines' likings. But number 19, Maddie Cochran, Libero serving for the Wolverines. From the Bick. Burke yet again, she is all over the court tonight. Valentina Valette, the killer V, delivering another crushing blow for the Wolverines. Absolutely, you can just tell by the look on her face, she means business. Well again, you said it earlier in this fourth set, if you are the Buckeyes, you do not want Michigan to go on a run, to have confidence, because once you get to set five, this crowd will go out of their minds in support of their home squad. Ste oh, oh, oh. Selman breaking floorboards here at Keene Arena. My goodness, that might have been the hardest kill of the night. Absolutely, Gatorade Player of the Year 2022 and 23. An excellent recruit by the Buckeyes, just as we've seen tonight, an incredible player. Nice return, kill for kill. Delivering there is Ray. Now back to serve, one of the best servers in the Big Ten. It is gonna be Valette. Six point lead for the Wolverines, just an absolute hammer shot. Joust, no touch. It was the right idea for Ray. You had that overpass coming right at you. Might as well go with a little bit of oomph behind it. Absolutely, those overpasses can be a gift, but the excitement can lead to your demise, unfortunately. Nice back set on the slide. Ohio State reads it. Burke kind of frustrated with herself. That was coming right at her left shoulder. She didn't necessarily want to put her hand up, but it was coming right at her shoulder, so it was going to make contact nonetheless. So she kind of had the mindset of, well, maybe if I palm it up, it's playable. Wasn't able to quite happen in that respect. 14-10 now your score. Again, Ohio State and the Buckeyes lead two sets to one. I think it's something that viewers might not realize, but just the speed that the ball is traveling at tonight. These girls have a split second decision, so little hesitations like Burke had on that last play can really be the difference between a point yeah. and losing one. 
Coach Virtue decides to take a timeout. Again, when you are up 14 to eight, and Ohio State goes on this little bit of a 3-0 run, I think it's a very justified timeout, Avery, in the sense that you don't want Ohio State to get momentum. You don't want them to come back in this set. You want to push it to five, and you keep letting this going on. It was just a placement of where Michigan was. They weren't quite comfortable in those last few points. Right. The, what the Wolverines want to do is keep their momentum. As we know, apparently the even sets tend to roll in the Wolverines' favor. So if they can keep their momentum and not allow Ohio State to break theirs, this fourth set might turn out in the odds of the Wolverines. When they played last year, it was a four-setter. And albeit the Buckeyes fell in four, Londot led the match 20 kills and 12 digs. Today so far, 12 kills and 20 digs. So she has flip-flopped the numbers. That was her total from last year here this evening in Ann Arbor. Again, Londot, such a great career. Career accomplishments on October the 13th, she became the second player in Buckeye history to record 2,000 career kills, 2,000 career points, and 1,000 career digs. The 2,000th career kill was on set point in the third as she joined Stacy Gordon in reaching the milestone. So Londot, uh, some may say, is really good. Self-preservation for the Buckeyes. Can Michigan take advantage? They do, tooling it through. Number 14, Kendall Ray with the hammer. 10 points away from sending it to five are the Wolverines. Kendall Ray is one of those players that all around the court, she just makes an impact. Earlier this season, she reached her 1,000th career milestone um, with her third kill against Delaware. Oh, that one just goes off the block and falls in, just kisses the line on the far side. As we're about to have some more substitutions coming in for Ohio State, Grace Egan, number 23, the red-shirted freshman out of Sterling, Illinois, checking into the front. So this is where you start digging deep into the bag of tricks and seeing if maybe a little bit of a rotational difference can make a play. Oh, thunderous kill by Riley Raider. A pirate's life for me. <laughs> Quick with the puns tonight. I, this, you know, it's why they brought me in. <laughs> Nice pickup by Cochran. On the far side, off the tip. Assistant coach for Ohio State, Dan Polakowski, saw a little bit of frustration. So close, so close. This is one of those things, and I know it's cliche. You throw the records out when it's Michigan versus Ohio State. Who wants it more? Who can make less errors on any given evening? As we've seen, Chopra, Outstanding evening in her own right. Chopra underneath it. That's gonna stay in. Buckeyes answering right back. She checks in, she sets, she kills. Grace Egan, nothing but Grace. And the Buckeyes have dwindled the lead to two. 51 sets played for Egan, 129 kills. So she's gotten some playing time. She's that spark plug for Ohio State. From the Bick, another kill. Lighting it up, Fowlette. You see these Wolverines just not letting Ohio State take that lead yeah. or go on a roll. And I think that is just really especially in this set, just detrimental to their success. Morgan Burke, the setter, serves. Back set, oh, nice left-hand uppercut by Cochran. 
Oh, dive to keep it alive. Once again, Egan, what a force she's been since she checked in. High return almost hits the ceiling. Burke, solid pass, Egan. From the big playable once again by Cochran. What a rally here in Ann Arbor. Uh. And the block. Eloise Brandui says stop it. That 23 again seems to just be that spark plug, like you've been saying, to make a difference. Sometimes that's all that you really need is a fresh player on the court to kind of change up that energy, the flow of the game. But guys might just have themselves on a roll. But a service error, a rare service error for the Buckeyes. That is service error number six on the evening as the, the pep band really having some fun over there. On the season, Lawn Dot, 22 aces, 20 errors from the service line. Egan, again, what a presence she's been. You kind of question, where was she earlier in this contest? And she checks out for the serve specialist of Hoffman. Now, as we stated last time Hoffman was in, she delivered a beautiful ace, number 13 on the season. I am sure Michigan's going to be aware and cognizant of her at the service line this time around. And another ace. A beautiful serve to the near line. Forced Kendall Ray to kind of send it back in. Miscommunication out of the back row for the freshman, Demetrician. Buckeyes have fought back to within one. Block back. They've tied it up. Michigan gonna use their second time out. What a run for the Buckeyes. Three out of the past four points have gone Ohio State's way. It was going back and forth, back and forth. But again, when it's sat 14 to 17, like we stated, Ohio State and the Buckeyes just, hey, they started playing cleaner, brought in that rotational player of Grace Egan and she's just, she's been a catalyst. Absolutely. Sometimes that it just lights a fire underneath the team and Michigan's gonna have to respond and um, really just kind of catch up and play their game like we've said earlier if they want to pull this out from Ohio State and take it to five sets. I mean, that, it, it's fun to say when you have a player like Egan just, you know, rise from the ashes. You're like, okay, welcome, welcome in Egan and let's see how she fits into this scenario. Well, she's done that and then some. That's that's fun. That That's the type of stuff that makes not only NCAA volleyball, but Big Ten volleyball so unique. You have a player like Egan, just okay, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna make an immediate impact. Absolutely. 18 all, 3-0 scoring run. For the Buckeyes, three out of the last four. And we are all tied up. Ohio State one sets one and three, 25 to 20 in fairly convincing fashion. The Wolverines took set two, 25, 21. And that's wow. how you get the point back. Yep. Swing in the lumber. Kendall Ray did not come to play tonight. Number 19, Maddie Cochran Libero back with the serve again. Wolverines looking to take the last six points um, and take this fourth set before heading into the fifth. Misguided pass, double hit gonna be called. What? That's where you say, what did Coach Virtue talk about in that timeout? Because that is two quick and convincing points for the Wolverines. And I always say, if you're here with us, first off, thank you. Second off, why not go five? Blocked back. The new kid on the block taking it step 
by step. Timeout going to be called. We've been invited to the block party on Hoover Avenue here in Ann Arbor. And just like that, a 3-0 run after a 3-0 run. Michigan now leads. Let's reverse the story now. You're Ohio State. You had all of Uncle Mo being momentum in your favor, knocking at the door of taking this in four. Different story now this time around. Absolutely. Looking forward to seeing Grace Egan back um, after substituting back in, just seeing if she can be that spark plug that Ohio State needs to just close out the match in four. But I won't lie, I've been enjoying this game. I think I might be in favor of a fifth. Okay, we're here on Big Ten Plus. We appreciate you being with us this evening. Ohio State not using much of that timeout at all. Saying what needs to get said and getting back out there in short order. Michigan, again, after today, will be taking on Purdue, number ninth ranked in the nation, and Michigan State and Minnesota, so an absolute gamut that they'll be faced with in short order. Coach Virtue, her second season at the helm. Spoke about the camaraderie here at Michigan. Cochran gets the ace off the tape, and that's when you just say, why not? Serving again. Cochran, three aces on the evening so far. Net violation going to be called against Michigan. Three points for the Wolverines to win. Three points for Ohio State to tie. Cochran on the season. 16 aces coming in, so up to 19 on the year. What a stellar number. Overpass. Brutal kill. Once again by Selman. Ohio State not going quietly in set number four. They want to end it here. Gentle hop serve by Hasbrook. Off the line. Can anybody get there? They can. Going to the well again and delivering. Who else but Kendall Ray? Absolutely. Blue needs to. Absolutely, looking, looking to put an end to it tonight. Wolverines are ready to go to a fifth set. If only Valentina can pull off two aces. Quick to the fifth. I think I jinxed it, yeah. folks. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been my bad. You know, you keep blaming yourself, and you know, it, yes, you should. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, we were talking about number 23, Grace Egan. Her career high in kills was against Bowling Green, 17. So she is no stranger to having stellar evenings. What a rotational dig, but they went right back. Keen Arena on their feet, they're in a frenzy. They are getting loud. Egan did everything she could to keep it alive. That overpass, they went right back, aimed right at her, and it fell at her feet. The Wolverines, one point away from setting it to five sets. Side bump to keep the rally alive. Poked over, uh. point, set. Four win for Michigan. And just like we predicted, we're going to five. 
It's one of the biggest rivalries in NCAA sports, and you're gonna get every ounce of it and more. Fifth set coming your way momentarily for Avery Walsh on Peter Ferreri from Keen Arena in Ann Arbor. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back on Big Ten Plus. The fifth and final set in one of the biggest rivalries in college sports. Buckeyes, Wolverines tied at two sets apiece. Michigan is start going left to right, Ohio State right to left. Welcome to Big Ten Plus for Avery Walsh. I'm Peter Ferrari. The closeness of this contest cannot be understated. The two sets that Michigan won, 25-21. The two sets that the Buckeyes have won, 25-20. And just like that, Ohio State gonna start the fifth and final set with the serve. Let's see if the crowd can quickly get into this. That's been a huge plus for the Wolverines. And that's how you wanna start if you're a fan of Michigan. Ray delivers, one nothing. She's just been on fire tonight. 
She's not coming to play, just direct and a missile. Quite a player on the court tonight. Ball let, service air. You know, and what's challenging, I was just gonna mention, it looked like she started a half a step back because of that earlier mm -hmm. violation and look where it ended up into the net. Right, with the service calculated as it seems hers is, those little minor adjustments can have a, a world of a difference. Haven't said her name in a while, but why not now? Boney, again, first to 15, must win by two, switch sides at eight. Ready to serve. High set to the near side. Cochran can't get there. I've spoken to many coaches throughout my tenure calling college volleyball, and nobody really likes set five because they're like, <laughs> you know, it's 15, not 25. Anything can happen. Any type of run can happen because your mind is geared toward playing to that 25. Left hand dump, picked up by Tuman. To the far pin, over the double. Nice job keeping it alive as Egan on the slide. Perfect set yet again. All smiles about it. Are the Buckeyes the slim lead three to two? Tuman with 49 assists on the evening. Over the middle. They're saying out of play. Four to two your score. Another point. Don't be surprised if Coach Virtue uses her timeout. Shorter leash again with it being the fifth and final set and a service ace. Ace is the place for Selman and there indeed is gonna be the timeout. And again, we've seen her flow so far this evening being Coach Aaron Virtue, knowing if it gets a little bit out of hand, she'll utilize that timeout. And again, it's not that it was just a kill, two kills prior, or two points prior, a service ace that clearly could have been returned. That's a conversation you need to stop it right now. Absolutely. With service Eve, it is those little mistakes are making the world of a difference for the Wolverines right now, especially when it's a game of 15. Those aren't points you have to spare. So calling that timeout, although it's early in the fifth set, it's a valuable one. Ohio State and their staff said how bright they feel about the future of this program. It's week to week adjustments, working to get consistency in the lineup. But the biggest thing, and as cliche as it sounds, they said, look, we've seen improvement from the beginning of the season till now, and they're gonna fight to the last point, to the last match of the season, and we're seeing it here. Again, they took a hit and set two, bounced back in set three. Took a hit and set four, and are up by three in set number four, or set number five, excuse me, 10 points away. And I don't even want to say stealing one on the road. They absolutely have grinded and earned this lead so far in set five. Absolutely. All of the points tonight um, are just being hard fought. Um, and it's, it's been quite an entertaining oh. game. Again, crowd got into it early in set five. But this little run for Ohio State, a 4-0 scoring run. On the slide, bang! That's how you answer with the slide attack. In comes in one of the serve specialists. Chopra has had a huge impact in this evening's contest. Near side, and that's in. 
a fraction inside the line and that's all it takes. Buckeyes now with the serve. Again, Coach, Coach Virtue having used a timeout so far. Teardrop serve into the net. Nice recovery by the Wolverines. It hits a banner, it's playable. Just as it hits the ceiling as long as it stays on the same side of the court. The slide, the block. Cochran looks far side. Double block. No, thank you. Pure adrenaline right now for the Buckeyes. Brandewe. Seven to three. A six one run for the Buckeyes. These teardrop serves are just causing the Wolverines fits. Back rowing in. When it's not power, it's placement. It's eight to three and they're switching sides. And right now the it's not just the power, Avery. It is the accuracy that Ohio State is delivering, not only the serves, but the kill attempts. They're not having to put much behind it. They're just saying, okay, where aren't the Wolverines and we're gonna put it there. Absolutely, as we talked about in the earlier sets tonight, Ohio State's, uh, their, t their reactivity and their ability to adjust has really been making a difference for them when it comes to breaking away inside the fifth set. As well, Emmy Selman has been a key player within these um, few points and often, more times than not, whenever they give it to her, uh, it's over. It's She puts it away or she sets someone up perfectly for that. Long set, finding the campfire. The freshman once again delivering. The 6-2 outside, Demetrician. Oh! Wow. Wow. Words need not be said, as that may take the cake for the hardest hit of the night. Nyambio, timeout gonna be called by the Buckeyes. And now, even though it's only a two point run for Michigan, I understand and respect the timeout called by Coach Oldenburg because it's a situation, she's all smiles right now because she knows, hey, we still have the lead. I don't want it to get the point if I'm Coach Oldenburg to say, okay, they're within one and now we're calling a timeout because that's even more added pressure. Absolutely. So take your time, get a breather, get a few laughs in. They know what they have to do. On the flip side, if you're the Wolverines, you came out of the last timeout or the side shift just absolutely on fire. Different situation now. Let's see what happens, what they're able to rally together. It'll be intriguing to see. We'll have to see who has the serve for the Wolverines coming out of this. Yeah, breaking that energy by calling a timeout from Ohio State um, off of Serena's just incredible within the 10 foot line. Um, you really got to stop that energy. Otherwise, that is the type of game winning fifth set pulling through energy that um, can really just make or break the game. You know, one of the players that's had such a, a good night for the Wolverines is Boney, and that's one of the players that. Coach uh, Virtue, excuse me, has said has gotten incredibly better this season. She's done such a nice job to just shut down everyone at practice. And why do I say that when you just look at the numbers? 16 kills, six blocks, and why not two digs as well, hitting 452. It'll be intriguing to see if she rotates back in Again, this rotation right now, a unique one for the Wolverines, but you have your one-two punch up front. You know, I th I'm gonna change my thought. I thought this was a timeout. This may be a review, however, on if the last one was in or out. So uh, again, we aren't privileged to what is happening right now. I thought it was a very quick timeout called. It was a review. 
and a net violation called on Michigan. So Ohio State and Coach Oldenburg, that must have been a quick from the hip show of the green card. A huge shift, nine to four now. It's crazy what a difference that eight to four versus mm. nine to four has. Or it's eight to five, nine to four, but. Yeah, but yeah, three points to five is, Ohio State six points away from winning. Float serve to Cochran. Rolling through, that's one. In comes Ray, subbing out number 10, Greskovich, out of Mira Costa High School. Demetrician now in. Freshman playing at such a superior level. The left hand, nice job adjusting. Grace Egan, she's a righty, flew up though. Saw it was better positioned to make the contact with the left, did so. Five point lead for the Buckeyes and they're five away from a huge victory here in Michigan. Number 15, Caitlin Hoffman, an influential server when it comes to the direction mm. of the games has just stepped in. And although it looks like she will not be serving again, sometimes all it takes is that one server uh, to change the pace of the game. Well, think about the run she went on earlier. You know, you and I were checking our notes beforehand just in case she got an ace. She did, and that just shows how vital she is back at the service line. So Cochran now, one of the best servers in her own right for the Wolverines. The back set on the slide. Left hand, not able to get there, is Morgan Burke. Buckeyes need four. If you're Michigan, you need two or three in a row. You need a run because you do not have the time to go one for one anymore. Back row, side bump, out of play. As Valette thought she might have gotten the touch. Coach Virtue trying to check if she's got a timeout, and she indeed uses her second. Six to 12, your score, and you want to talk about a turn of events. As you and I stated, it was five to eight. Coach Oldenburg decides to go with a review. Net contact immediately took the wind out of the sails of Michigan. Absolutely. They were down nine to four then, and it has been a three to two run out of already having a five point lead. Now, crazier things have happened. I've seen <laughs> crazier things happen. If you're Michigan right now, I am sure, Avery, the conversation is one point at a time. Absolutely. It's just playing point by point and not getting ahead of yourself or not getting too caught up with how far behind you are. So the Wolverines, as they know, once they get on their roll, they are pretty unstoppable. But it's the question of, can they get back on their roll with only three points to Ohio State wins at, would win at 15. 12 to six year score, looking at some of the leaders. Selman is now taking the kill lead for Ohio State at 17. Lawn dot 15 kills, 21 digs. Raider 13 kills. And Webker with 10 of her own. Ray at 14 behind Boney. And Demetrician at 11 kills. And again, conversation I had with Coach Virtue, with Jacobs out, who's gonna step up? Who's gonna rise to the occasion? And of course, it's the freshman coming into play. Demetrician with a huge impact. Three points away from match victory. Do the Wolverines have a run? Back row, Egan. What a catalyst she's been since she subbed in in set number four. Too far it goes. Coach Virtue gonna use her challenge to see if she got a touch or not. 
And again, a little bit of strategy here, Avery, as you know, you've utilized your timeouts. What have you got to lose? Right. Let's throw out the review. Let's see if there is a touch or not. It may be a very quick review. Again, the officials, you know, have the highest speed high of camera and exposure. They're able to see things that, you know, we aren't <laughs> or that aren't even on the broadcast. They have their privilege of additional cameras. Again, if you are Ohio State, and talk me through this, Avery, if you come make the road trip in a hostile environment of Keene Arena and you're able to come away with a five-set, it's it's one thing if it's a three-setter. Right. But the fact that you have bounced back every time and now are on the precipice of winning in five, that is a season-defining win. Absolutely, especially for this, this season rivalry. We know that whoever walks away from this game will have – Bragging rights in their own right because of how how hardly fought every single point um, of every match was. So it's really it's for bragging rights. It's for it's for rivalry, but it, it's so much more than that tonight. So a long review actually happening. I I thought honestly speaking this might be a quick one, but there may be something there when Coach Virtue called for this review. And looking at the overall number, 64 to 61, the kill differential, Ohio State leads. Ohio State hitting 269 to Michigan's 202. Seven to six, one extra service ace for the maze and blue. The 75 digs from Ohio State to Michigan 60 just shows just how scrappy Ohio State is being tonight. They're not letting anything drop unless they know it is out. Well, I want to thank you for being with us this evening, 13 to 6. Again, they are utilizing each and every angle. And I believe we have a result. And a tip was called. A huge, huge call by yeah. Coach Virtue. My goodness. That touch really just gave the Wolverines a chance to steal back that momentum, especially with number 13, Valentina Valette, yep. a strong server. Arguably the strongest on the court tonight. Absolutely. Set to the far pin. That stays in. What accuracy. My goodness, Selman just rises so effortlessly. Drops a foot and a half in front of that near corner. Absolutely, if we're talking power tonight, Selman's name is definitely on that list. She just does not miss. High set to the near side. Playable Egan once again. Softly goes over. Who's got it from the far side? Oh my goodness, what a nice up for the Wolverines. Poked over again, the diving uppercut. Valette, too far, thought she had a call. Well, with it being 14 to seven and having a review, again, might as well use it because they won the last review. They kept the challenge, and so immediately you saw Valentina Vallette throw up her hand that she thought she got a tip, and we're going back to the review board. Again, when, you, when it's such a decisive point, why absolutely, not? Absolutely, absolutely. This could be end of game, or this could be a start of a Michigan run. They're really, this point is so, so important. Again, such a fun back and forth battle there's been this evening. Appreciate you being with us. As stated, coming up for Ohio State on the flip side after today. They'll head to Illinois for a evening tilt tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern. Before they're back home for four in a row. Maryland on the 15th, Rutgers the 16th. Washington on the 22nd, who is receiving votes, and Indiana on the 24th before heading, how about this one, to punch on the road to end of the season. 
Wednesday the 27th against number 7, Wisconsin, and Friday the 29th against number 14, Minnesota. That's not easy, folks. That is not. Those are two so in, such important games and such uh, great teams. And if Ohio State plays anywhere as scrappy and tenacious as they are tonight, those games will just be that much more interesting to watch. A long review yet again, but it looks like we are going to have an answer. And Ohio State retains the point. No touch was called. Michigan out of reviews. Michigan needs seven in a row to stay alive. Buckeyes need one and only one to win in five. Out of play. Come here, our plate list. Up over to the jelly. Ila. I don't know, not the egg anymore. Ta. Number four, 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 number four,